right y'all so we are going to jump right into the tutorial on how to get these beautiful passion butterfly braids whatever you want to call them so i used two different types of hair to create this look and i'll get into why i did that in a little bit um, i used the expression three times water wave an 18 inch and then i used the africana six times pre-stretched 32 inch hair um, which is just like regular braiding hair for me, I only used one pack of each of these brands of hair for a full head and I had like 14 or 15 braids, something like that. And then the reason that I used two different types of hair is because I tried this style before and I only used the water wave hair and I had to use so much water wave hair to make the braids look full is that the braids just ended up being way, way, way too heavy. Then the next thing I'm going to do is to separate the hair that I need onto my thread rack so that all my braids turn out close to the same size. So per bundle of the braiding hair, I was able to separate it into like six medium sized pieces. And then for the water wave hair, I just separated two strands each because when I feed in the water wave hair, I'm going to feed in two strands at a time. To slick my hair down, I'm going to be using the Even New York 24 hour edge control. I have tried Shining Jam and that hole just isn't strong enough for me, but you can use whatever works for you. So I wanted to go with the knotless look for these braids. I am using the same method I used in my how to jumbo knotless braid tutorial. I'm going to start the braid off with the braiding hair because it's going to blend better with my hair and it's going to start off the braid by giving it a more full look. And then I'm going to begin and feed in another piece of braiding hair to continue that full look. I'm not going to go into detail about how I do my knotless braids in this video, but I will link the video below if you would like to watch that for reference. So next I'm going to feed in some of the water wave hair. I'm gonna pull the strands so that one is way longer than the other. And the only reason I do this is because the hair was only 18 inches. If it would have been longer to match with the 32 inch hair, I would not have pulled the strands this way. So if you have longer water wave hair, you don't really need to separate the strands in the way that you just saw me do. But because my braiding hair was 32 inches and my water wave was only 18, I need to stretch them apart so that my water wave hair hangs longer than the braiding hair so that the ends of the braid are curly with the water wave hair. So after I braid a little bit more, you just saw me feed in two more strands of water wave hair and then I'm just going to continue to braid until I get down to the end. I also just want to point out that the amount of hair you use for each braid is personal preference. You can use more, you can use less. It just depends on how big or small you want your braids. But I will say the more hair you use, the heavier your braids will be. So once you get down to the end with the amount of hair you want left out, now I'm going to do like three or four single strand knots at the very end of the hair. Um, I do three or four just to kind of secure the braids a little bit more. You really don't need that many. One or two knots will probably be just fine, but me, I like to do a little overkill just to make sure that they're gonna come, not going to come down. So I'm going to show one more braid sped up just so you get to see it again because repetition is the way we learn. And then we are going to get into the fun part of the braids. Also, I wanted to mention that I parted my hair the day before I did these braids. Parting my hair takes me so long because I'm not good at it. And on top of that, I want my parts to be perfect. But as always, I'm going to recommend that if you're doing these braids on yourself, if you're not good at parting, have someone help you or do the double mirror setup so that you can kind of see the back of your head. Then once I'm finished with all the braids, I'm going to begin to pull on the braids to give it that butterfly like passion look so that they look really fluffy and pretty. So the way I do that is I just take two parts of the braid and I begin to pull in opposite directions. And I kind of do this all up and down the braid, except when I'm getting close to the very top. I like to leave about two and a half inches maybe maybe a little bit more of space. 
not only so the braids look very uniform, but then also because that's where the majority of my real hair is, is at the top. And if you pull some of your real hair out, the braids aren't going to look as neat. They're going to start to look frizzy. So there's two things I want to point out about this step of the tutorial. The first thing is the looser the hand you have while you are doing this braid or the looser you braid the braid, the easier it will be to pull these strands once you get to this step. The tighter you braid, the harder it will be to kind of pull these strands once you get to this step. So just keep that in mind when you are braiding your hair. The other thing I wanted to point out is the amount of hair you pull on your braids, how big and fluffy you make them, that is all personal preference. Get creative, make it your own. It doesn't have to be an exact certain way and that's also why I love this style. So this is the finished look. Y'all, I love these braids. They turned out even better than I expected. They are so gorgeous. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, you can leave your comments and questions down below. Thanks so much for watching and until the next style.